Ah, good evening, Mr. Stanford. Your table is ready. Sam, table number 12, please. Good evening, Miss. Good evening, sir. Are you uh, meeting someone? I'd like to speak with Mr. Dalios. My name is Fran Meredith. Mr. Dalios has already left, but you can leave a note. Those are somewhere I can reach him. I, I already called the only number I had. I said you could leave a note. Then Mr. Dalios would know how to get in touch with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, good evening, Mr. Gates. The table is ready, Sam. Let's take number 14 for Mr. Gates and party, please. Enjoy it, dinner, folks. just jumped from the roof. What was she wearing? It's got to be her, if I'm right. That's the girl that asked for you a couple of minutes ago, Mr. Delios. Nobody asked for me tonight, Jack. Yes, sir. She got an emergency exit door opened. We think she was at the top of the fifth a couple of minutes earlier. You think? Well, she was wearing a pink blouse and gray pants. That you can't identify. And she was blonde. And the maitre d' up at the top confirms that a girl just like that was up there just before this happened. Anybody with her? No. Uh, he said that she was alone and uh, she didn't say much. She just kind of looked around like she was looking for someone. And then she opened the emergency exit stairwell. Got an ID? The name is Francis Meredith, Arizona license. The birth date is right. She just turned 17. Suicide, Chief? Yeah, looks like it. But it's 17. It's a hell of a solution. The girl was a runaway, arrested on prostitution charges, released on bail just five hours before she jumped. The Telegram has been doing a series all week on the runaway girls on the Minnesota Strip. It's a study in sensationalism. It's another week's headlines. Suppose we were able to grab some of those headlines back from them. Well, keep talking, Earl. Suppose we pull in a major case squad, sign them to the Minnesota Strip. Aside from adding to the crowd, what does that do? Well, Fran Meredith was bailed out by a bondsman named Big Eddie Wilson. 80% of the girls that Big Eddie bails out belong to Delios, or at least to a pimp who works for Delios. Now, let's say provisionally that this thing works. It could also blow right up in our faces. Now, I don't want our squad, our uh, knights in shining polyester, busting a bunch of people who are primarily interested in having a good time in our fair city. Well, that's my idea, Jim, and I don't want to look bad. Suppose we pull in some cops from the outlying precincts. Let's get on it. Like a goodbye. I guess you do save a couple of bucks buying in the city, yeah. 
Then you have to carry it out to the islands, huh? <laughs> you know, I was just thinking the same thing. I guess I'll probably wind up in the shopping center as usual. You in a rush to get there? You want a date? Commuter special, 50 bucks. 50 bucks, huh? That's all. I'm a little old for dates, honey. Oh, come on. It's all in your mind. Yeah, I guess you're right about that. Okay. I turned the air conditioner to super cool, so it ought to be real nice in here in just a minute. Why don't you take off your hat and stay a while? Don't bother, kid. Don't bother what? Look, it's a nice room. You're a nice guy, but time's money. I'm a police officer, don't leave. You're what? Now, calm down, calm down. Be careful what you say. Damn it, why did you pick on me? I didn't pick on you. You picked me. Look, I can't take another bust. I can't do days again. I just got my head screwed on straight. I just can't. Get your clothes on, kid. Uh, the uh, blue pins uh, represent detectives on foot, and the uh, greased mark axes here are wagons that we have available for the uh, transportation of prisoners, and the yellow pin is Lieutenant Davidson's command post in the 14th. He's setting it up now. Oh, it's beautiful, Finnerty. Thank you, sir. It's so pretty, it'd be a shame we caught anybody. Hmm? <laughs> How'd a briefing go? Oh, fine, fine. Uh, Davidson's never been on a major case squad before, but he's, uh, you know, he's young and sharp. He has his degree. Well, if he's that good, we're all in a lot of trouble. Chief of Detective's office, Finnerty speaking. Oh, yeah, Lewis, what can I do for you? Oh, uh, well, I don't know if he can. Hold on. Uh, case squad detective from the 115. Anyone with a deal got lost in the Port Authority? Hello, Ben. Welcome back to Big City. Keep like I never left. I just nailed Charlie Delios for you. Good Lord. How? One of his girls is willing to name him as the top procurer, who also supplied him with narcotics. Who'd you talk to about the rest? Right. I'm trying to reach Lieutenant Davidson, but he wasn't at the command post. I'll catch up with him, though. All right. Now, where's the girl? What's the address of the hotel? Where did you find Charlie D? All right, I'll talk to Lieutenant Davidson. And I'm sending Carol right over to the hotel immediately. I want you to give all of this to Finnerty, all right? Made your day for you, huh, Earl? Just like old times. Yeah, just like old times, Ben. You've done good. Here, here's Fendi now. Carol, I want you to yeah, get at the New Manhattan Hotel on 38th Street. How come? Okay. Well, we either got a major break or else we're in a lot of trouble. I brought in detective Ben Lewis from the 115. Well, he just turned to young Hooker and she gave up Charlie D. Ben locked him up. He got Charlie Delios? Yeah. Now, uh, Miss Roberts, you're, uh, 18 years old? Last March, the 19th. What is your occupation? I'm a prostitute. How long have you been so employed? About 14 months. Here in New York City? Yes, sir. Do you know the defendant? Yes, sir. Under what name? Charlie D. Mm, Mr. Delios. Did you ever give Mr. Delios a portion of your earnings? No, sir. Never. Never? No, never. What sort of relationship did you have with him? I uh, met him at this party once, and then I just saw him around, you know. If you never gave him any of your earnings, why did you sign a statement saying you did? That officer over there who arrested me said I could walk if I turned Charlie D for him. Otherwise, he'd bring me up on narcotics and prostitution charges. I'd do a lot of time. When did he make the statement to you? Not the I most surprising turn of events, huh? But then was so sure. He thought she was anxious to nail Charlie D to the wall. The witness will please step down. The defense counsel approached the bench with the assistant district attorney. Gentlemen, I strongly suspect the witness is not telling the truth, but I see no way of proving it. You could ask her questions all day, but she won't change her story. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Do you want to make a motion? I don't have much choice. Your Honor, I'm forced to request that the complaint against the defendant, Mr. Charles Delius, be dismissed for lack of evidence. Motion granted, case dismissed. This court is in recess for 10 minutes. So 
tell you, Kimber's not going to be all that thrilled about this morning's work. They say I blame him me and my big ideas. Wish I thought twice back in Kimbrough's office. I'm going to call the office and see what they can plan for me today. I'll see you later. I'll see you. Nassau County line to see if it was still there. You trust those Nassau County supervisors, you know. The rest was pretty much routine. Why? Are you wondering if I can handle that now? No, 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 but I am a little confused. I wasn't there. The Lieutenant Davison briefed you, and I'm sure that he told you that Charlie Delio is was... the most important pimp in the Midtown area. Tied organized crime, insulated by a whole bunch of high-priced lawyers, had all the girls on the street tied to him with uh, fear and dope. Sure, I got a briefing. And you had to know that once you got the girl on the stand and she's looking at Charlie Delio's, she's going to take the case and blow it right out of the water. Thank you. Any excuses for that? No excuse. So if you want to drop me back the uniform or send me out the pasture, I understand. Oh, that's it, huh? No explanation? I believe the girl. You must have busted a thousand hookers before I even got out of the academy. I don't ever remember you believing any of them. A man changes over the years. Not that much. Well, let's forget about what happened in the courtroom. You tell me what possible good could have come out of beating the devil out of Charlie Delius. Something, Something just happened, Chief. I don't know. Maybe if he wasn't in the men's room and I happened to walk over there. You followed him in there. I saw you. All right, so you saw me. So send me back to pasture. Drop me back the uniform. To go ahead. Look, I don't want to do any of that. What do you want to do then? I want you to cool it. Well, what about Delios? I got a major K squad working on Delios. I got people trailing that girl, Darlene Roberts. Now you had your shot at that. Give somebody else a chance, huh? Or is there some reason you can't do that? Let's just say I'm getting a little older, and just at that moment I wanted to believe her. And after all, you know, she is kind of a nice kid, Chief. Oh, Ben. They were all nice kids once. Yeah. Why was he so sure you'd get up on the stand in the first place? I don't know. Yeah, that's why no. get rid of her now. No, no, please. I'm telling the truth, please. No, no. What do you think? I think if that door opens again, we grab him and bust him. Tell the chief we had to blow the tail. What did you tell him about the original deal? You gotta open that door again. No, no, please, please, please. I told him that we didn't have to pay for the smack. I told him that Mr. Delia said that if things ever got real bad, we could come to him any time for a plane ticket. Plane ticket to where? Anywhere. Or anywhere. Isn't that right? All right, I think that. Darlene's telling us the truth now. Where am I going now? Calm down. The worst is over. Looks like Jean Mars and company are taking Darlene for a little stay in the country. There's no snakes in here. I guarantee it. What do you think it is? It certainly isn't a young lady's finishing school. Girls going into the house, and they're getting back to the car and leaving. Yeah, we got to get somebody on it. Yeah. Come on. Be careful, though. The gaming commission's been very active lately. A lot of casinos are running scared. No problem. No problem at all. Good. Excuse me, Mr. Bellios. Yes, Lee, what is it? I was set up at the airport on another matter, and uh, 
boiler stacked up as usual, and well, this young lady was waiting for her luggage, we got to talking. Well, uh, couldn't you at least give us young lady's name? Mr. Delios, this is Nancy. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. Would, would you like to join us? Okay, Lee, thank you very much. This is Mr. Scully, who's also a visitor. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. I guess Lee told you that uh, we're into various enterprises. We have uh, modeling schools and cocktail lounges. You did mention that, yes, sir. You know, the photographers that we employ have a lot of foreign clients. Uh, they like to use American girls in their ads. You know, like Princess Jean's. Very big overseas now. Yeah, I've read that. Where are you from? Wisconsin. I saved up enough to get a one-way plane ticket, and uh, here I am, on my own. Are you also broke? Well, I'm getting there fast. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what. You go to this hotel tonight. It's a very nice place by the park. Tell them Mr. Delio sent you, and uh, they'll make a place for you. I think that this will, uh, that'll take care of your breakfast. I'll call you in the morning and wrap everything up, okay? Terrific. I look forward to it, okay? And, uh, wait a minute. Just one more thing. Here, sit down for a minute. Um, how old are you? Eighteen. Give it to me straight. Now, you're no more than 16 and a runaway, right? No, no, I'm not a runaway. I... Nancy, I'm sorry. We can't hire anyone under 18 without their parents' consent. I don't understand. I really am sorry, Nancy. Forget it. No, 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 no. No, you keep this. It's my fault. I, I built your hopes up. What is it, Lewis? Waiting for me to go to the men's room? Oh, I lost that round. Who's the other bum over there sitting with you? Mind your own damn business. You're forgetting what my business is. Well, Chief, what the heck are you doing here? Well, you let me stand out in the hallway? Oh, come on in. Come on outside. Sit down. You know, I just got off the wire to criminal records. I gave me a description of the guy that was with uh, Delios last night. All right, the embers. Yeah, one of his airport pimps picked up a 16-year-old. But Delio spotted me, which blew that. But the other guy looked familiar. His name is uh, Paul Scally. Permanent address, San Susi, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's not connected. Care for a drink or something? No, no thanks. Sit down, Chief, sit down. Ben, I'm sorry. But I have to take you off the Major K squad. You'll report to the 115 after your day off. What are you talking about? The day before yesterday? The day before yesterday, Delio's attorney hadn't come to see me. He hadn't threatened to sue the city. He had no reason to sue the city because you hadn't hounded his client at the Embers. Hounded him? Since when is a detective following a pimp? Look, I told you to cool it. I told you not to make a vendetta out of it. Our chief doesn't come all the way up here to tell a detective second that his assignment has changed. <laughs> Anything else, Earl? I came up here because you and I worked a radio car together. And you taught me a lot about this city. Yeah, well, that was a long time ago. Well, I want to know what's wrong now. Nothing. Nothing's wrong. I don't believe that. I don't believe it for one minute. Now, you put in seven good years out there, Ben. Something happened to you when I brought you back downtown. What happened, Ben? Look, you can't keep it in forever. daughter, Karen. At first, I used to just take days off looking for her. And it was holidays, vacations, leave of absence. My wife, Mary, went with me. Sometimes. And Mary got sick. Ah, she got get worse and worse. After a while, uh, three or four years, Mary died. Yeah, I'd heard that. You did find your daughter. Yeah. I finally found her. Honolulu. She was working at a kind of a, kind of a hotel on a, on a street there. 
You don't have to tell me this. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do now. You know, Earl, Hawaii is so beautiful. Maybe that's what makes it hurt so bad. But there's so much around that's beautiful. But she had a pimp. She was charging 50 bucks a trick, just, just like that Charlie D's girl that I busted. I was, I was angry so long, Earl, I, I thought I hated that kid. Maybe I did. You know, I was going to tell her that she killed her mother. Gee, crazy, crazy ideas. I don't know what she was using or even how much by then. Oh, God, she, that kid was a wreck. I remember she was, she was going to make us a pot of coffee. That little hot plate there in the corner. She'd have burned the place down if I hadn't helped her. It's funny you remember things like that. It's hard to remember even what we said. And I knew she wanted me to, to go. And I put my arms around her and I held her. She's dead now, isn't she? Yeah, four years ago. I, the cop who helped me find her at first he called me up. Told me she drowned. I don't know exactly just how. You know, I, I read that the thing about that girl who jumped off the top of the fifth. Warned her. You know, once she got out there, a poor kid. She must have been so scared. You know, it's so, it's so windy out there. You wonder, do they really mean to die? I just spotted a couple of cops. Something's going on, so uh, why don't you just take off? You gonna be all right? I mean, you want me to call anybody? Mm -mm. I'll be fine. I'll call you later. Mr. Delios. That's right. No, no, I don't have to see the shields. What the hell is it now? We have a search warrant for your person in your apartment. No, stow it, man. I've had enough. You tell I no, shot. You don't tell I shot a thing. Who are you guys? Okay, hot shot upstairs and keep your Holy, mouth. get your hands off me. What? Stafford? Oh, Charlie, is that you? Well, hi, Miss Stafford. How are you? Great. Okay. Hi, hi. Oh, I told you. Honey, could I have a 20? What, all it cost only 20 bucks? No, that's for Charlie. Um, good guy? Not terrific. Bogota is too behind La Paz. Oh, poor Bogota. Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, Miss Stafford. Have a good meal. Bye, sir. Bye. You know, isn't this much better? I mean, instead of running out to a restaurant or, or grabbing some junk food somewhere, here you are with a home cooked meal with your own place, with your own boss. Oh, yes, possibly. Yeah. It's a holy office of coffee at the place. I ain't expecting a Julio. Oh, yes, that's the crepes and zest I told you about. Now, come on up, Julio. Turn it for you. Look, I don't care who it is. We got enough already. Chief, I shot Davidson. Ah, Lieutenant Davidson. Yeah, this side shot. So, look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you. 
It's just that we've got that information on Dean Martin that you asked for, and something else that's just broken, too. She's born 31650 in Miami, Florida. Formerly a licensed RN. She lost her nurse's license for illegal possession and use of dangerous drugs. All right, when was that? Uh, 1974. She's got two arrests for prostitution in New York, 1977, dismissed. And one arrest for maintaining a house of prostitution, 1978, also dismissed. Okay, hold on a second. Julio? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch my cat. Come on. Oh. Go ahead. What's just broken? Charlie Delios was just arrested in his apartment 40 minutes ago. By who? Um, Carl and Paterni, Organized Crime Control Bureau. They got him in his apartment. Are you ready for this? With half a pound of cocaine. Son of the gun. No, no, I appreciate you calling to dinner, Davidson. Yeah. Hang in there, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Good news, I hope? Yeah, sort of. Well, it all came from behind. Something like that. You know, I've got to hand it to you, Irene. The wine's from the liquor store. The man course is from 21. The search for a pastry shop. <laughs> and I even remember the imported sardines. After all, if I was going to cook for you, I couldn't leave them out. But you're right. There is nothing like a home-cooked meal. Young man's fancy. She get off my back. She was talking about night extension courses at Columbia. Oh, Columbia, I see. The only time you were at Columbia is when they had a riot. And as I remember, that was under protest. <laughs> Want to come to my office? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. I see, you read the newspaper? All right, what's the problem? Now tell me, uh, your old partner, Lewis, he's pretty happy about the outcome of this pimp? Oh, yeah, I'm sure he is. Why? The Stellius lawyer dropped a bomb on a Manhattan DA's office right after he bailed him out. He claims the dope was planted. Oh, he's a lawyer. It's his job to lie. Yeah, but Delius is no fool. He ain't going to keep that much stuff in his apartment. Let's say he did. Did you read McCartney and Paterni's report? No, not yet. Well, they claim that Delius come on very strong now. Earl, you and I know it. He's not going to antagonize those officers. They're going to rip the walls down. But they didn't have to, because they found it taped neatly under the bathroom sink, right where they expected it to be. Kimber wants you to look into this. As soon as possible. Earl, when did you put Lewis back to the bushes? Four or five days. Look, there can't be anything to connect him with this. Not so far, and hopefully there won't be. But when this broke, I got a little crazy idea. Before I get around routinely to check it out, maybe you could check it out. Find the truth one way or the other. Maybe come up with something that's best for all of us. Eddie, I'm not sure there's something that's best for all of us in this one, but thanks. Well, one more thing. I talked to McCardell and Pacerni, and I found out from them that they got their tip from a stoolie named Mongo. Mongo. Okay, we can start from there. Mongo, I thought you forgot me. Yeah, well, it's not like ordering takeout Chinese food, you know. Yes, sir. Where do you live in Chicago? I mean, where did I live last? Mm -hmm. Skokie. I mean, I mean where, where was I born there? Um, Valentine. Uh, that's near Soldier's Field, huh? No, uh, it's down by the airport. Since when did you join the FBI? Okay. It's 50. 50? I mean, you know, in Chicago, you can get some in New York to some festival, right? Thanks. My pleasure. Uh, is there a place where I can go? A place for why? The way you look, you can fix in the doorway, and the sooner the better. Yeah, well, I'm just afraid that uh, my lieutenant might see me. All right, Mongo. No. Okay, hold it. I want to talk to you a second. Oh, no. Relax, I just want a few words with you. Oh, no.
Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine, really. So you're the one they call Mongo, huh? Who'd you think you were getting, one of the White House staff? <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> this color at all. Who are you? Who are you, who are you with? You've been on the streets because you have cooperated. You're just a little fish that turns the big fish over for the narcs. It's been mutually beneficial for you and for them. So how come it's you and them? Because all cops don't want the same things. Suppose I say, take me down to the station house and book me. Suppose I cut you loose instead. Go across the street to the coffee shop and grab the guy that sold you the packet. I'd be a dead man. They think I'm a stoolie. No, no. They would know you were a stoolie. What do you want? What do you want? You know a couple of detectives. I know a lot of detectives. No, you knew these detectives well enough to give them Charlie D. Ah, uh, you're trying to bury me. You're trying. What do you got against those cops? Another thing? I got nothing against you. You just have to tell me how you knew Charlie D had half a pound of coke in his apartment. You may not like the answer. I don't even like the question. Now, Ben, this Mongo told Lieutenant Davison that the tip on Charlie D's apartment came from you. Who's Mongo? Oh, don't give me that. But you're in too deep. Too deep in what? Listen, I didn't think That's for... right, you didn't think. That's your problem. All right. Two days before they hit Charlie D's apartment, you busted some college kids out in your old precinct for a full pound. And only half of that showed up. Oh, those college kids always claim that stuff. They're smart enough to go out and get themselves a, a rich Ivy League lawyer who claims that the, the cops ripped them off for half their dough. They'll say anything to get the case thrown out of court. Yeah. We had Charlie D's neighborhood chat. So what? Listen, I don't have to listen to this. Yes, you do. Right. And one day before they hit Charlie D's apartment, a Saturday, a Saturday is a quiet day in that neighborhood. And people remember a well-dressed man in his early 50s. And one of them even made you for a cop. You know, I got to hand it to you, Earl. Maybe they got you shuffling papers around that office some of the time, but you're still one hell of a cop. But I'm going to ask you something, though. Now, what I did, or tried to do to Delios, you think I had a pretty good motive? I think you had an understandable motive. But, Ben, I talked to you twice. I took you off the detail. You could have just left it alone, put in your papers. All this would have been behind you. No, no, Earl. You're forgetting how my mind works again. Now, if you hadn't put it in, it would have worked. And Delios would have been off the street. Don't you realize what you've done? You stole dope, evidence, from one good bust, and you used it to frame Delios. They're going to throw you off the job. They're probably going to put you in jail. Yeah. Yeah, well, I appreciate you coming up here to see me without bringing a bunch of cops with you, Earl. Uh, ben, look, I'm trying to figure out a way to get you out of this. So far, I just can't find an answer. Oh, no, Earl, no, we know the answer. That fine, upstanding citizen, Mr. Delios, he goes free to continue his career, I go to prison. A.M. this morning, Charlie Delios is due in court to face preliminary charges on drug possession. Yeah, but those charges will be dropped. Delios will walk. It was a bad bust. We've got to find a better one. Now, we've got to put together the operation at the house where Darlene Roberts was taken. Uh, what have we got most recently? Well, four of the girls and their teens have been transported there over a three-day period. What about surveillance? Four days running. We've inspected every bit of waste and garbage. We found 11 cartons used to package methadone, so we checked back to the pharmaceutical house where the methadone was packaged. But all the purchases were legal. It's just great. We start off with maybe a teenage brothel and end up with a medical clinic. Yeah, apparently specializing in withdrawal from heroin to methadone. Well, Charlie D isn't running a rehab center for retired teenage hookers. It's got to lead to something. Chief. Oh, good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry, you guys. Sorry I'm late. Chief, I think maybe I have something. I just finished reading Ben Lewis's last report. In it, he included information that Delios has a friend, Paul Scully, in Vegas. Delios always tells his girls I'm good for a plane ticket. The man who drives the car for Delios, Bill Aubrey, has the Cadillac registered to an outfit called the Vista Travel Service. I've got the feeling you've done good, Carol. Ten days ago, Vista booked four girls out of JFK to Vegas. Three weeks ago, they booked two other girls in the same way. That's enough. It makes sense. This guy, Delios, he drives out the prettiest of the girls after they've had a long run or too many busts, and he sends them off to Vegas. It's a nice racket. There's five girls out the house now, right? Yeah, that's right. All right, they've had time to taper off. I want surveillance on that uh, Vista travel service. All right, and stay with Jean Mars, too. If we decide to bust, take her to the nearest precinct, but don't let her near a telephone. Chief, what am I supposed to charge you with? Use your imagination. $10 
10.15 a.m. The subject has just returned to the house from the Vista Travel Service. Gene Mars just picked up five tickets to Vegas from the Vista Travel Service. All right, Davidson. As soon as they confirm bookings to Vegas for those five girls, I want you to book Gene Mars. All right. Chief, can I talk to you? Yeah. Sure, come on in. I'll get back to you after we check this out. Okay. What's up? Look, I think we got trouble. What's wrong? One of the detectives think that Delia's place just called. Ben Lewis went up there about 20 minutes ago. Is Delia home? Not yet. Come on, let's go. Delius just went up. Jackson's waiting for you by the elevator. Stay me the radio. Lewis, you really are crazy. Maybe. If you pull that trigger, you're a dead man, too. I can't think of a better way to die than to take you with me. Look, Lewis. Forget it, Charlie. You ain't going nowhere. That's something we got in common. Now, Lewis, wait a minute. Ben? What are you doing? Drop it, gun. You're not going to stop me, Earl. Nobody's stopping me this time. Right, then you have to shoot through me. Get out of the way. I don't think you'll do it. You want him to live. You want him to go on. I don't give a damn about him. I want you to stay alive. Why? So I can spend five or ten years in the slammer? Is that what you want from me? It's not necessarily so, man. You may go to jail, maybe not. But if you pull that trigger, it's all over for both of us. Earl. For the last time, get out of the way. Oh, I'm not moving. I drop the gun. Ben. For me. Ben. of the Mann Act, transporting minors across the state line for purposes of prostitution. When the state finishes with you, then the federal government's coming after you. Hey, now, wait a minute. I was never involved. Now, you wait a minute. Now, you and our Charlie Delios have sent kids to Vegas to hook before. We caught one of your drivers. Five more girls. Can you wait till I get those girls on the stand so they can tell how they were planning to spend their summer vacations? You got to understand the situation I was in. Well, that's what I'm saying, and are. Now, it was you and Charlie, or it was Charlie alone from the beginning. Viewer's bottom lady. And a pimp always counts on his bottom lady. He trusts her. Lady, I want you to get him out to the house today. He has to be inside the house to show knowledge and control of the operation. Uh, I'll need a reason. Why don't you say one of the girls broke into a cabinet, grabbed some snacks, got high, and maybe OD'd. Would that do it? Yeah. Yeah, that'd do it. It could be dangerous. Oh, just making the call is dangerous. Okay. We'll have you charged as a conspirator, but not as a defendant. Does that mean I walk? It might even mean you could fly. Jim, I, uh, I can get Delios for you. Not just as a super pimp, but as an interstate figure tied in with organized crime, specializing in taking teenage hookers to Vegas. We can convict in state and federal court on criminal conspiracy. You're 100% sure now? 
And you can call a press conference to announce the rest yourself. I'll be there only if you want me to be. And I'll throw in that the major case squad idea was yours. Well, what do I have to throw in, Earl? Jim. Let Ben Lewis go. Let him put in his papers and retire gracefully. We're uh, talking about a case here. He framed Delios. We're talking about a case that's past history. It was dismissed. Earl, I don't think anyone wants to see a 26-year veteran ruined because he was a little over-anxious in busting a drug-dealing pimp. He's four years short of his 30. He'll go out with less money. And he'd be leaving a job that was all he had left. Yeah. All right, Earl. I can agree to that. It's a deal. It's a deal. Nice work. Thank you. I hate to say this, but what happens if he doesn't buy our story, Chief? And you won't have to call me Chief much longer. Uh-uh. Guess I'll have to call you Chief a little while longer than anyway. McConnell, we move on my command. Okay, go get her, huh? All right, let's move. I'm sure she'll be out in a minute. Hey, what's the matter? What the hell's going on? Stupid. Let's go! Boy, you're lucky I won't take a murder rap. Hold it! Okay, let's get O'Connell and the others in here and check out the rest of the house. Let's take them. Let's go, Miss Morris. Just want to hold up in court, Charlie. Okay. Sergeant O'Connell, listen, I want you to get uh, some of your men and check out the rest of the house. I don't want to miss anything out here, okay? Say, Chief. Hey, how's it going? Great. The retirement papers came through today. Oh, good. What you gonna do? Well, I gave up the apartment, bought myself a new car. I thought I'd uh, head out towards Los Angeles. You know, uh, maybe get some industrial security work. I get a job like that around here. You and I both know a lot of people. Yeah, no, I, I'm kind of looking forward to driving across country, taking my time, you know. It's better, Earl. Really, it is. Are you gonna drop me a line? Sure. You might see me on the coast sometime. Deal. Yeah, I'll probably have a big house and a swimming pool. Lord, I'll drink to that. Earl. Thanks. Here's to you. Here's to both of us. Good future, Miss.